Yes. Just make sure you wipe up your tears before you come back. <laughs> What is the meaning of life? Okay. Yeah. My goodness. So young. So young to have lost the zest for life. I know. I'm 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 all over the place. All right. Let's get them. Let's get them. Why is this like this? Stop that. Okay. Hey, say hi to everybody. You guys are up on the big screen. There you are. She's like, ah. All right. Hey, thank you for, oh, hey, we're right on time, right? No, 35. Whew, sorry, it takes a few minutes to get everything reset. Welcome. Hey, happy Monday to everybody. Uh, just right off the top, so no doubt you saw some grades go in. Um, I still have other food grades to put in. I thought they went in, but for some reason, didn't think, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm looking at that later today, so. Other food grades are going in. Um, test grades went in. We're not going to look at those tests today. If you want to talk after class, we can uh, we, we can chat a, a little bit about that. But not too bad. Um, this week we do have a test. I pushed it from Wednesday to Friday. Okay, so it's going to be on Friday. I decided not to put it on. I'm not. I didn't put it on next Monday because I know some of you have a calc test and there's other things. Uh, so basically, the, the week is going to go like this. We're going to do a little bit of review today. We're going to do a lesson today. We're going to do an activity on Wednesday uh, that will be represented on the test, kind of, uh, not in, in a large part, but it involves us using race cars that you pull back and you get to zoom them. And we're going to do some predictions about that. And we'll do some review. We're going to talk, we're going to have a test on Friday. That'll be the, te the period on Friday. And then next Monday, we're going to drop Barbies off of the balcony using your predictions. So you're going to make some predictions about Barbie. We're going to drop them off um, and see how good your predictions were or if I'm going to be buying new Barbies. OK, so today we started a lesson on on Friday and I kind of got the sense sometimes as a teacher, things are going you're like, this is going great. And then everybody's like, this is not going great. So I kind of had that, that suspicion like. Come on, Sam. Get in the room. All right, um, so I, I don't sense that it went well. I think part of the confusion was the fact that we just weren't like able to, to kind of process through it a little bit. So we'll do that today and, and look at what exactly is going on. So I want to start with prayer. We're going to talk about that lesson from Friday. We're going to do a little bit of review time and then we'll move on to the next day. Like it's going to be that good. All right, questions on that? Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. Thanks for waking us up for some gorgeous weather. Lord, I thank you for a beautiful and simple dedication. I pray that as we are wrapping up this quarter, God, it would just go well. I pray for an abundance of balance and peace uh, with what we're doing. And I pray that uh, all of our stuff that we're wrapping up over the next week or so would go well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let me share a screen here. Why? Okay. I'm not really sure how to make this happen. Look at Stephen, is that your dog? <laughs> That's his dog. Look at that dog. What's the dog's name? Thumbs up again. Dog's name is Thumbs Up. 
<laughs> oh man, Stephen, you are such a kidder. Okay. So I I can't. I don't I, I can't. Zoom, you tricky thing, you. All right. Yes. Frank the Tank. Franklin Sinatra. Just despicable. Such a camera hog. All right. So Friday, here's what we were doing. Just a review. I had you go to the Staplet, uh, to the Staplet app, and we put some points in. Will you go do that now? So at the top of the notes, at the top of the notes, I had you go to this tiny URL, to a tiny URL here. I'm going to minimize our friends. Sorry, friends. You're a maximum part of our life, but you're a minimum part of our screen now. So go to this tiny URL, regression applet. And we wanted to put in some points so that we had a regression that had a correlation of about 0.4. All right, so we had this regression. We have a regression and it's got a, a correlation of about 0.4. And then these instructions told us uh, to sketch that thing. So what I'd like for you to do is sketch it or screenshot it, put it in your notes. And what you should have is something that looks a little bit like this, right? And then we talked about, so then I, I broke into rooms. I was like, hey, do this activity. And you guys, like, I, I jumped into a room and they were like, we don't know what you're talking about, what you're asking. Fair. What is this line here, this blue line? Say it a little bit louder. Sorry, I got a Coke machine. This is the least squared regression line. So I'm going to label that. So that's our least squared regression line. And our least squared regression line takes as close as it can get to all the points at the same time. Fair enough. That's what we've been studying. But then I kind of dropped on you the mean X and mean Y lines. Can somebody explain to me what the mean X and mean Y lines? What does that mean? Skylar, what do you got? It's it's hard to it's hard to kind of verbalize it, but yeah. What do you got, Miller? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. It's the mean of X and the mean of Y. So every single one of these points has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. If we laid out all the X coordinates and we found the mean of that value, we put the X mean there. We lay out all the Y coordinates and we find the mean and we put the mean there and they intersect. Now, what did we notice about the least squared regression line in relationship to mean X, mean Y? Skylar. Yeah, they intersect on the least square regression line. That makes sense because we're saying the least square regression line is kind of like in the middle of everything. And mean is like the middle of everything. So they all intersect. And so then we started to do this activity where we were putting in sample points. And so the first one in 2A was 
if a point was added to the far right side. Okay, so go ahead and put a, put a point in on the far right side. So I'm gonna draw in my v squared, show my mean x, mean y. I'm gonna put a point in on the far right side. What we're doing is we're observing. And it was asking you things. It said, well, what happened to the correlation coefficient? What happened to the y-intercept? What happened to the slope? And you did a, you're, you're doing a, like a, an, an exploration of this. Did you finish this? I actually want to check in. So I'd love you to get into at least partners, if not threes, and check in and see if you didn't finish this, like what does it do in all of these? So for two, a, B, C, and D, I'd like for you to check in and, and do it. If you did, I want you to verify your answer. So I'm gonna give you about three minutes, four minutes to do this. So go ahead and check in with your people, identify your people, and fill in how does the least squared regression line react slope-wise, intercept-wise, and correlation-wise when you put different points into the correlation in various places. Set a timer for three minutes. Set a timer for three minutes. Hey, Zoom crew, how we doing? You guys all good? Or you need time? Steven's dog is giving me the thumbs up. Thumbs up from thumbs up. Got it. Perfect. Here I am. Here we go, let's check in. Here's what I got. So when we put these, when we put these pieces together, here's what I got. If we add to the far left side, the slope decreases, the y-intercept increases, the correlation decreases. Part C, if we added it below the least square regression line, the slope stayed the same. The y-intercept decreased, the correlation decreased. If we added it above, 
The slope stayed the same. The y-intercept increased. The correlation decreased. So that's one point. That's by adding one point. So the question is, what are we supposed to pull from this? Okay. Let's do a little bit of a breakdown here. For A and B. So on A and B, the general effect of putting it to the left or to the right, what did the line do? Show me with your arm. What did the line do? It's a tilting. So the general effect here is tilting. So it was a tilting on the X bar, Y bar line. Show me with your arms. What does it do when we added it on the Y, on the X? What would you call that? Yeah, I'm gonna go less technical, but yes, it is a vertical translation. So see that up or down? So we could say it lifts or pulls Now, all of these have a general name. These points that we, this, these points that we did, that we put on them, how did they all affect the correlation? Look at this, right here. Every single one of them decreased the correlation. What do we call points? that decrease correlation that are away from all the others? They're outliers. Are these in pattern outliers or out of pattern outliers? Okay, so you're probably guessing out of pattern. So what would make it an in pattern outlier? So check this out. So let's just say, I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it back in up here if it'll let me. It won't let me, it's clear. So here's my least favorite regression line. Pretty decent, it's a decent correlation. I could put a couple more points on here and raise it. Drag this one down. Okay, pretty decent correlation, right? 0.9. What if I put one way up here? What's gonna happen? Is my correlation gonna go up or down? So if I have one that's far out, but it's gonna be close to the line, if I keep drawing the line, that's called an in-pattern outlier. If I put one way up here, you see how see what I did to my correlation? That's called an out-of-pattern outlier. Let's make a note of that. An in pattern outlier is one that's following with the general trend of the line. An out of pattern outlier is one that's not gonna be close to the line as, it, as the line goes out. Sorry, I'm zooming all over the place here. These are all out of pattern outliers because they decrease the correlation. You are never going to have to fill out a chart like this on the AP test. So why do it? A question that they might ask is they might say something like this. 
Here's your data. Here's your plot. It might say something like this. A point is added at 10, 1. How does this affect the least squared regression line? They might ask you that. And so you've got to be able to think, okay, if I theoretically put a point there, is it going to tilt it? Is it going to tip it? Is it going to shift it up and down? They're going to ask you, well, how does that affect your y-intercept? How does it affect your slope? What does it do to the correlation of your least squared regression line? Does that make sense? All right. So let's do it. Let's, let's generalize some things here. What do you think? Which outliers had the greatest effect on the least squared regression line? Vertical or horizontal outliers? Horizontal. Why? Yeah. So there were two things that could have changed, right? Slope, y intercept, well, three things. Slope, y intercept, correlation. When we had these vertical ones, one of them stayed the same. Slope stayed the same. So we'd say horizontal. They had more leverage. Since they are to the left and right of X bar, Y bar on the plot. Moving up. They have more leverage since they're to the left and right of X bar comma Y bar on that plot. Okay. Let's break it down. This box is going to be divided into two pieces. Here's the first piece. There's my least squared regression line. There's my X bar line, there's my Y bar line. And those, you can remember like X equals and Y equals line, X equals line goes up and down, Y equals lines, go side to side. Right here is X bar, Y bar. I would be remiss if I didn't put some points in here. Okay, there's our, there's our points. And so, A good least squared regression line has these traits. Low S and a high R squared. What is S? I mean, because you've got a test this week. I mean, because you want to know this in general for your life. What is S? Standard deviation of what? of the residuals, which means that the residuals are closer to the line than they are farther away. High, farther away means higher residual, right? So a good least squared regression line gets really close to the points or as, as close as possible. Here's the second piece of this box. This is going to be brand new, but not unknowable. Least squared regression line. Here is an equation for the least squared regression line. Kind of looks like what you've seen before. New coefficients. So the least squared regression line, what does y hat mean? Again, predicted y. Very important to put predicted. In fact, in the rubric on many, many, many of the questions from this particular unit, you get docked an entire point if you don't say predicted value. Okay? So predict value is equal to B sub zero plus B sub one times X. This looks like the slope intercept form. And just to be clear, 
this is our y-intercept, and this is our slope. So what are those values? I'm so glad you asked. To find B sub one, you are going to take R over R times the standard deviation of Y over the standard deviation of X. B sub zero is equal to Y bar minus B sub one times X bar. I want you to pull out your formula sheet right quick. Pull out your formula sheet. Pull out your formula sheet. I want you to take a peek through. Yes. Oh, yes. Delivery day. No, that's on the way. Gro yeah, grocery pickup today. Grocery pickup is today. That is another surprise, but for everyone, not for you. Okay, are there going to be shirts? No, I mean, the shirts are awesome, but this is better. Friday. All right, what do you, so let's do, let's do your formula sheet. So look at your formula sheet. Part of my problem, I have always had this criticism of math class. I'm a math teacher, I've been doing this for 12 years, so I feel like I can have this criticism. Formulas are brutal, because you never need them in real life, and when you need them, you can find them, if you're gonna use them in real life. So, do you need to know the distance formula? For math class, you do. Do I ever need to know the distance formula? Am I ever gonna be without it if I ever really need it in my life? And the advent of the smartphone has made this even worse. However, Formulas in statistics, I love because look on your sheet. What do you see? Do you see any formulas on it? Steven, there should be one on, I think I posted it on the, oh, he texted you. I think we posted it on, on Canvas. Do you see this formula on your formula sheet? What page are you on? Now, is it labeled as Jack and I labeled? No, they actually, that's the problem. So now they don't necessarily tell you what formula it is, but they give you the formula. So you've got to kind of put this together. So that's why I make such a big deal about Y hat. So they actually put this in there. They give you these formulas. And a lot of times, here's what a question on your AP test is going to look like. Given here's the standard deviation of X, here's the standard deviation of Y, here's the correlation, write the, write the equation for the least square regression line. Can you do that? So you're going to have these pieces. In fact, we're about to do it right now on this check your understanding. So what I'd like for you to do is get back in your groups. I'd like for you to work on this check your understanding. At the very bottom is probably the most important piece of the, of the, of the whole example. It's going to be writing a least square regression line. I guarantee you, look at my face. I guarantee you, you're going to have to do this on your test this week for this chapter. You're going to have to write the least square regression line from the standard deviation and knowing the means. You're going to have to do it. Yeah. How, so let's say you don't have the standard deviation of X and Y. Where did you get that? A lot of times what they're going to give you is they will either give you. So down here, they actually give you the standard deviation. A lot of times they'll give you like the X, Y list, all the data. 
You do one bar stats. Yeah, got it. Okay. So from a list, you can pull out the one bar stats to get standard deviation, to get the mean, and then you can construct the least squared regression line. Okay. Ah. Does this help? Yeah, Cleveland and LA are the two cities that they're looking for. Yes. Yes, yeah, so that, that determines the. Oh. You think it broke? No. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. Don't look at it. So R squared is the amount of variability. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I do not yet. Next month's budget. So R squared is the amount of variability that can be accounted for by the least squared regression line. So you can pretty easily move back and forth between those two because you, if you have R squared, you take square root to get R. If you have R, you square it to get the R squared value. So we're concerned about that because we want to know how much variability our model has. Um, or how much can be accounted for by the least squared regression line because that's going to tell us how reliable our model is. It's one of the, the measurements that we use to talk about how reliable our model is. All right, I got to look now because I got to write on it. We're not. You think, it's, you think it's bad? I think it's good. It's good! Yes! Man, look at that. It's perfect. I expected like blue and blue and green lines, just like purple, green, red lines. 
All right. I know. Thank goodness. Hey, for the Zoom crew at home, I tripped over my cord and my iPad fell straight to the ground. So, yeah, so we're good, though. No worries. All set. All right, hey, let's 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 take a look here. So I made a couple of statements. Um, one of the things that I want to re-emphasize in having great as your tests, and we're not going to talk about them this week, we're heading into another test. We need to be sure that we are providing context and we are being extra careful to say this is what it is. So for example, quite a few of you on the test said something like this. You calculated a per perfectly calculated the score. Perfect. And then it said interpret the z-score. And the z-score was, let's say, 3.8. No, that's bad. 1.6. Interpreting the z-score, so you're like, perfectly telling me, I'm like, yeah, got it. And then you said, it is 1.6 above the mean. Now, close, close, but not specific enough. It is 1.6 standard deviations above the mean of whatever it is, okay? No, but, but no, you don't have to. But being ultra specific is okay. So here we go. I didn't just say what it was. So I said, since LA is on the far right and below the least squared regression line, it will do what to the slope? Decrease. Yes, this is A. It's going to decrease the slope. And if it decreases the slope, watch. If it decreases the slope, what does it do to the y-intercept? If it decreases the slope, it's going to do what to the y-intercept? Increase the y-intercept. So decrease the slope, increase the y-intercept. Part, parte Bay, because Cleveland has a large residual. It has a large residual. Do you agree with that? Visually, what, how do I model residual visually? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, so can you the position from the line, I agree. So Cleveland has a large residual. What does it do to the standard deviation? Does it make it bigger or smaller? If you have a greater distance, does it make the, the standard deviation of the residual bigger or smaller? Bigger. And it makes R squared. Now this is kind of confusing, right? It's like big or smaller. Don't think about it like this. Think about it one way. Yes. And that's what I'm helping you do. So before you write this sentence, so before you're like larger, smaller, increase, decrease, I don't too much. I want you to think one thing. Is it close to the line or not? Is Cleveland close to the line or not? 
No, so far away from the line. What happens to the R squared value? It, it has to go down. Why does it have to go down? Yes. Yes. The, the line is not a slope. The correlation goes down. The correlation goes down. The amount of variability it counts for also goes down. So if you have a point that's close to the line, R goes up. That's good. If you have a value that's far away from the line, R goes down. R squared goes down. And depending on where it is, is it going to get tippy or is it going to go up and down? That's what we're asking. So just so don't so don't get in your head about it. Just look and see. Is it close to where the line is or where it might be? Because if it is, then R squared goes up. So R squared decreases. Number two. Here's how I do a problem like number two. Are you ready? So what I like to do is this. X bar equals 24.76. Y bar equals 171.43. Standard deviation of X, 2.71. Standard deviation of y, 10.69. B sub one, let's pull the formula. So check it out. I'm telling you up front, you're going to have to be able to do this. So if I have I have my R value. This is just plug in the formula. I have my R value. I have my SY. I have my SX. So to find B sub 1, just plug in the values. So this is going to be 0 0.697 times 10.69 over 2.71. And that's equal to 2.75. There you go. There's my slope. I know. I do wish that also. They didn't ask me. They should have. I know. I had to go with the customer. I had to go with the customary notation for statistics. So then with B sub zero, so I've got I've got y hat or you know, y bar here. So I'm gonna go 171.43 minus, and now I have B sub one. I have x bar. One hundred three point three four. That's just from plugging in things and stuff. Super specific there. So then here's my y hat equation. This is why I do what I do. Y hat equals b sub zero minus b sub one times x bar. So then just plug in my values. Yeah. Answer. My personal opinion. The hardest part about doing a problem like that is there's so many subscripts and things to keep track of. It feels like physics. Okay. And so that's why I told you at the very beginning when we started this problem. I lay out, I like to lay out everything that I have. Pull it all out of the problem. I have it all. And then I calculate my B sub one. I calculate, and then so then I've got my formula. Got my formula, I fill it out. I've got my formula, I fill it out. I write what I actually want for my equation, and then I fill that in. 
So it takes longer than it probably should because all you're doing is plugging in, but you got to keep the pieces straight. Anybody in physics out there feel me? I got all the numbers. I don't know what to do with them. Yes. Okay, you know what I'm saying. All right. Questions about that? Yeah. What? Yeah. Every day. Every I don't know. I have no idea. So my iPad says that, but when I exit out, it is the current time. Like the time is correct. Yeah, we were talking about it in physics one time. It says the exact same thing. Really? It says the same thing every time? Yeah. That is so odd. I don't know. Yes. Mask break. Yes. Mask break. We'll be back at 1230. Coming at you. Mr. Saris. Mr. Saris. Mr. Saris.
Hey. We started the first, the next unit of debt, and then we had a journal question. So we watched three little short clips and then did a journal. Cool. A journal entry. Uh, I can pull it up for you here. To give you a like, second unit, it's, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. So we walk in the hospital, right? Because that's where the uh, appointment is. Yeah. But it's in a separate building, so there's not much to do on that. But like, we walk in, my mom has to stand in front of this like iPad thing, and it scans the temperature. No way. And then the lady, first, I don't know why, she's like, yeah, here's a mask. And my mom was like, what's the point of getting another mask? I, I have one of those. The lady was touching it. We were like, "Wait, what?" You You're like, um, personally, I don't, I don't care. But I was just like, that just defeats the purpose. They made me. They made me wear. I had one on. They, they you have yeah. to put it on over it. I was like, what? double mask. Yeah, I had a double mask. I'm like, what? <laughs> what's your What's your email? Thompsonmore.com. T H O M P S O M M O O R E at me. Okay. I'm just going to send you a screenshot of the module that we did. Okay. And the that one is the general question. It'll probably take you 15, 20 minutes, maybe max. I think it's. There's a three minute video, a six minute video, a two minute video. So about, you know, 11 minutes there. And then just do the journal question. It's about that. That's it. Do it. Too much, man. It's too much. All right. Okay. So we already did this lesson. We already did this lesson. We're gonna we're gonna revisit it. What I'd like for you to do right now is take this iPhone data from previous, and I'd like for you. Take the iPhone data and create a scatter plot in Staplet and drop a screenshot of that below. Okay, so, so put your put your data into Staplet. Yes. What's it? Is it not working at all? You 
You tell me. You tell me. How many, what kind of variables are these? There's two variables, right? Year and then units sold. So what are the what kind of variables are those? Not explanatory. Categorical or quantitative are your are your choices. They're quantitative. So you have two quantitative variables here. It says what? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it does tell you. So years. Here's the data. I'll put the data back up here so you can see it. So use, use the year since. Yeah, use year since. It'll make it easier. So in this case, it's years since, or years after 2000. Beautiful. I love it. Sketch it. Potentially, it's happened before. <laughs> the Lord knew. He knew. All right, so check it out. Here's what I got. Here's my, here's my, here's my regression, right? So when you sketch your regression, remember we did this. So this is why we're doing this. This is review here. So when you sketch this regression, remember when we're talking about how well does a linear, a least square regression line fit, what's our first observation that we need to make? Is it actually a line? Or is it curved? Is this one actually a line or is it curved? It looks curved. So then here's what it's it's lining. So then what I did was begin analysis. So or calculate correlation, I think is what it said. So then I calculated the correlation and check out my residual plot. Look at this. I want you to give me a thumbs up if you think this is good, a good residual plot for a line, or a bad residual plot for a line. Okay, 
So, but the problem is, here's where people get hung up, right? They get this value right here. They get an R value of 0.956 and they go, but Mr. Saris, the R value is really high. It's good. Why is this not a good fit? Because the first, the first thing that you check is how liney is it? Is it a line? And maybe you think, well, I mean, it's fairly liney. I mean, I've seen less liney things, but it's not bad. And the second thing you look at is the R value. Like, well, I wasn't sure, but now, I mean, it's 0.95. That seems pretty good. And then I say, the third thing should be the residual plot. What does a good residual plot look like for a good least squared regression line for linear data? It looks not like this. We call it random scatter. Is this random scatter? No, because we got this fat thing in the middle, this fat gap in the middle where everything's below. And so what we'd say is this is kind of a, an arc and it's bad. It's a bad pattern of residuals for a line. Yeah. Everywhere. So what would make this a good residual plot? Let's just say hypothetically, there were two extra points in here. Would that make it a good residual plot? Yeah. But because there's this pattern, positive, negative, positive, we got to say, ah, uh, no, not really a good, not really a good plot for a line. Now, does that mean it's not a good fit for a different kind of regression? No. It's not a good least squared regression line. Flip over to your notes. Your notes in number two ask you this question, and this is kind of an AP type question. Would you use a linear regression to model this data? Sketch the residual plot to support your explanation. Normally on the AP test, they wouldn't give you this part. Okay, they just say, would you use a linear regression to model this data? Support your answer. So you could say something like this, like in this case, you'd say, no, check out this residual plot. The residual plot has a positive, negative, positive pattern, which tells me that a line would not fit. If it was the other way, you could say, hey, you should have heard the residual plot has good random scatter. It has a high R value. It looks like a line, good. And so for number two, we'd say no, because our residual plot does not have a good pattern. It doesn't have random scatter. So what do you think in number three? Since we expect the data is nonlinear, we, can make a linear, we cannot make a linear regression. However, we can transform the data to make it more linear. But first, we need to decide what type of function you think it is. Who's got an idea? What do you think it is? Maybe quadratic? Does it go top like this? We got half of that, so exponential is probably a better fit. Let's write exponential. I'm not going to write in highlighter, though. What is the general form of an exponential function? Man, look at this. Chapter 3 pre-cal coming at you right now. Not that. I'm talking about the equation. Yes, that is true. You are correct. It goes like this. What is the equation for a, for a, for a, an exponential? Y equals A times B to the X. Now we're walking. We're not running. We're walking. Now you know. Now you remember. So let's just say you, you forgot. Let's say you're on the test and you're like, man, I just I can't. I'm like, I'm right there, but I can't remember the form. Because what we're about to do in a minute is we're about to algebraically manipulate the form to make it align. It's easier than it sounds. But you can't remember. You're like, oh, crap. I know it's exponential, but I can't remember what the form is. Check it out. Stat, calc. I think yours actually. Okay, I think does yours, yours might actually say it. I was going to say, I think yours might actually say it. This one does not because this is the older model. I think it might say exponential regression on there. Yeah. 
might give it to you after the fact. I wonder if I have, yeah, here. When you run that regression, check it out. Oh, I'm screen sharing, hold on. Check it out. If I can, you see how it gives you the form? Okay. So the point that we're trying to make here is not necessarily, can you have this Rolodex of forms, but really can you identify the form and then work with the formula? So what is the inverse of exponential? Logarithm. So this is gonna be, this is review right here. Don't start sweating yet, we're good. So if I have y equals a times b to the x, I want to make this into a line, meaning I don't have an exponent anymore. No more exponent. And this is like a street fight with this, with this equation. It's no holds barred. So you can use anything to undo anything. How do I undo? How do I get something out of the exponent? I've already identified its logarithm, but how does logarithm work? Well, if you remember, I could take the log of both sides I'm gonna move up. If I take the log of both sides algebraically, what can I do now to make this like? Yeah, so this becomes log y equals x log a times b. Do you remember how, it, how the rules of logarithms work with the multiplication? This is Hank, he's gonna be so proud, I can tell. I can see it on your faces. It's plus. So log y, if you're sitting there going, I'm, I don't remember this. Well, it's okay. Welcome to class. I'm teaching you right now. So here it is. When you take the logarithm of a product, you can split it into the logarithm of the first, times the logarithm of the second. Check this out, man. This is like this is like advanced level maneuvers here. Look at this. It's the same form. It's a number equals a number times x plus another number. Miller. 10. Great question. So the, the base of this particular logarithm is 10. Now, what if I have a natural logarithm? What's the base of a natural logarithm? E. So if I ever have like a problem with bacteria where it's like e to the x, I can use natural logarithm to undo it. So you got to remember a little bit, a little bit here, but it's all good. And so what happens here? Well, I need to, I need to work with my data because I'm going to try to make a linear model. I'm going to try to make a linear model. We're going to take the log of the unit sold. Check it out log of y, y was unit sold. So take the log of unit sold, and I'm gonna cut to the chase here. I want you to do the first, well, go ahead and take the log of the unit sold from the first page. We're gonna fill in the chart. I would like the ladies to start at the top of the list, the guys to start at the bottom of the list. We're gonna meet in the middle. Yeah, you literally take the log. So. Because, because this was y hat equals a plus b to a, a, a plus bx, we're going to take the log of the unit sold. So ladies, start at the top. Gents, start with the 13. Yeah. What'd you get? Give me one more decimal place. There you go. What's the next one? Yeah, zero and zero. 0.23. What's the next one? 
What's the next one? Gents, you catching up now? At the bottom working up? So here's the here's the data that we got. So here's the data that we now have. What I'd like for you to do is jump back over to Staplet. And let's see, did this work? Were we able to make a line? Was that? Nine. Establish is, it's easier, I think. Because when you hit uh, calculate regression, it'll spit out the residual plot and all that stuff, just in the interest of time. Don't, uh, don't, yep, don't put 70 instead of 0.7 because it'll be wrong. Yes, imagine that. It'll look completely flat except for that one. Is this what you got? Close? What's that? So check it out. So when we put in the data, the new data, where we took the logger. So what, what, like, I always learned this at this part. Who thinks to do this? Like, why do this? It's like, what is the point of this? Okay, great question. We've been studying how to do a linear regression, a least squared regression line. And so we can't really make good predictions on an exponential function. Why? Because we don't know how. And so what we're doing is we're taking the least squared regression line, which we know how to figure out, is it a good line? How strong is it? Do an analysis of it. We're, we're able to make any data fit into this least squared regression line. So we just created the framework, this whole chapter. So Carson can tell me, is it a good line? How strong is the regression? What does the analysis look like? He can write that out. But the second I give him an exponential function, he's like, hey, I'm out. I got nothing. Because we haven't done that. And so we created this whole framework for deciding, is it good? Can I make a prediction? And then all of a sudden, he can make a prediction about whether Barbie's going to smash her head open. Great. Exponential can't do it. So we have this whole box. We can put everything in and do it. Now we're taking, saying, hey, take this little kind of data, change it a little bit, and now you can, now you can do all that stuff with it. Take this one down here that's quadratic. Now you can do that with it. Take this one that's over here, exponential. Now you can do it. And so with a small step of algebra and a little bit of understanding, we can now fit every kind of data into the box that we already know how to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why didn't it work? Or did it? What do you think? But Mr. Saris, now there's a negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Here's the, here's the trick. You're always going to be able to find a pattern. You so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's a three part pattern. That's it's a three part pattern. That's the problem. Positive, negative, positive is a problem. This is not a problem. 
This is good. Okay? This is good. What are you confused about? This is good. This is good. Five parts, no good. No, five, five, no, no good. No, five, you don't, you don't use a five part analysis. You don't use a five part breakup. What I'm saying is you could always go positive, negative, but there's always going to be something. So you're looking for one that only has three parts. Three groups. You're looking for one that's three groups. All positive and negative. That's that's so three or less, I should say. Yeah, because it would be four is okay, five is okay, six is okay, seven is okay, eight is okay, nine is okay, ten is okay. Ninety-two, just fine, just fine. So this one is good. Okay, this one is good. Now, let's look at what the actually least square regression line is going to look like. Uh, da, 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 da. Right here, you see it? Write it down. Here's our least squared regression line. But don't put y hat. I'm gonna hold on. Trust this process. You gotta trust. I gotta get my sign back. You gotta trust this process. It's sort of a Y hat. The problem is, what if I asked you to make a prediction about year 22? When you put 22 in here, what is it going to spit out? It's going to spit out the log of the units sold. And so to be abundantly clear and correct, you have to say predicted log units sold. You always have to check to make sure if I put a data value to make a prediction in, am I going to get out what I actually want? No, the answer is no, you're not. You're going to get out the log of what you actually want in this case, but not what you actually want. So do we think the regression line is good? Yes. Residual plot shows good scatter. I want to write down one thing and then we're going to be done. Yes, to get the correct answer, to undo the logging of that answer, you got to do 10 to the power of. Is equal to 10 to the power of negative 1.546 plus 0.184 times 15 because we want 2015. So to undo any log, you do the base to the power of whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. Your homework for next time is to start the chapter review in your book. So do the frappy. So do the frappy. Do the frappy and do the chapter three uh, AP practice test. I'm not collecting it. If you get stuck, that's okay. We're going to talk about it. But do the frappy and the chapter three AP practice test. Okay? All right. You guys are amazing. Thanks for sticking with me. We'll see you. Zoom crew. We out. Email me if you have questions, okay?